my number two, we moving. At the end of the story, we can see the plan of God. If you read what we just read, it said that she gave birth to Obed. Obed gave birth to Jesse and Jesse gave birth to David, who was the king after God's own heart. And so it's at the end of the story, we can see the plan of God. But here's what I want to point out. The power of God is seen when you put the plan of God, which we... we Understand at the end of the story, God's plan was to bring David through the union of Boaz and Ruth. But if the, if the power of God is seen, when you put that in context, or at the beginning of the book, it says um, that during the time of the judges, that means that this book is set at a time of, of in, his, in the history of Israel that every man did what was right in his own eyes. And I want you to understand that. Remember last month, we talked about how up and down and crazy the nation of Israel world was and how they were constantly in captivity and they had a cycle of events. And it was just a real chaotic time in the in the history of Israel. And this is where I believe that we see the power of God. We see the power of God. All this happened during a chaotic time in his in, in Israel's history. But even in the middle of chaos, God was still able to carry out his plan. And I want you to get that, that even in the chaos, God still was working out a plan. And here's what the second thing that we learn about God through the book of Ruth is that chaotic times cannot stop the plan of God. I want to say that again. Chaotic times cannot stop the plan of God. And I want to stress that because many people, many of you get discouraged during times of upset, times of disappointment, times of chaos, when it seems like things are going on haywire, because oftentimes many people feel like the, the chaotic times are going to hinder or stop God's plan. But I want you to understand this, that no matter what happens in your life, if God wants something good to come from it, it's going to come. If God wants something good to come from it, it will come. It does not matter how chaotic it gets. And this is what I tell people who are trying to reform their lives. I tell them all the time that, listen, just because you had a period of chaos in your life, right? Just because you had a, a crazy moment in your life, that does not mean that God was not working while you had the chaotic times. And I want to stress that, right? Because just because things look like they're out of control, that does not mean that God has stopped being in control. And I want to stress that to you. When COVID hit, right, it shook everybody up. But, you know, for me, I was waiting just to see what God was going to work out because I understand that when things go haywire, that does not mean that God has lost control. And I want to I want to stress that, right, because so many times we feel like that when things are not going right, that God can't work. But I have learned through periods of not just my own life, but by reading stories in the Bible and seeing how God does things in the Bible, by seeing how he performs in my own life. The very times that you don't think God is doing nothing or that you don't think he's able to do anything are the very time that he's doing his greatest work. And this is why the Bible can say, can say no weapon form will prosper because nothing can stop what God intends to make happen in your life. And I want you to get just because somebody forms a weapon, that don't mean that it's going to prosper. If God wants you to win, you will win. And I want you to get that, that nothing can stop the plan of God. When I see Jesus in the in the New Testament and he's riding on the boat with the disciples and the storm is coming, right? And they, Jesus, dude, don't you care that we perish? Remember that when Jesus says, where is your faith? And it was just getting them to understand that the storm does not stop the power of God. And I want that to sink into your minds as you watch and as you listen tonight, that the that the, the storm does not stop the power of God. And it takes time and experiences that teach you to trust God, not because you're unbothered by the storm, not because you're unbothered by the chaos, but because you understand that chaos won't stop the power power of God, that storms don't stop the power of God. Enemies don't stop the power of God. People coming against you don't stop the power of God. 
things that happen in your life do not stop the power nor the plan of God. And so I want that to encourage you that God has power, not just when things are going good, but God has power when things are going however they going because he's God. And I want you to understand that, that we don't just serve a God who can't move just because things prohibit him from moving. But he is the God, the sovereign God who controls the universe. That means no matter what you do, if God want to bless you, nobody can curse you. If God want to curse you, nobody can bless you. It don't matter. And I want you to get that, that the storm does not stop God's power. The chaos that will not stop God from carrying out his plan. And finally, here's our number three.